Hello and welcome to episode one of my Advent of Code 2020 series. So in this series, I'm going to be doing the Advent of Code challenges for the year 2020 as they come out day by day. Uh, if you're not familiar with Advent of Code, Advent of Code is an annual programming challenge that takes place from December 1st to December 25th, where every single day you're given a few challenges and your goal is essentially to solve them. They're generally cent uh, centered around problem solving rather than hard programming skills, so they're pretty much applicable to anyone from a novice to expert developers. Uh, so I highly recommend, even if you're a beginner, that you go ahead and follow along with this series by coding first and checking my solutions later. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and keep up with my channel as we do this, uh, you can go ahead and hit subscribe, and then I've left a playlist down in the description, which hold is going to hold all of my Advent of Code answers for the entire year. Uh, so if you want to just see my code and not use the videos, I've also left a GitHub repo down in the description with all of my code as it comes out. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out as an easier way to follow along. So today we're going to be doing day one's challenges uh, and let's just hop right in. So we start off with some backstory for what Advent of Code is this year. Basically your goal is to go on vacation after having worked to save Christmas for the last five years through Advent of Code and to, to go on vacation you need to collect stars. You need 50 stars and you get stars by completing challenges. So that's two challenges a day until December 25th. Um, so our first challenge comes from the elves in accounting, and they want us to take a look at their expense reports, uh, which is just a list of numbers. So our goal for part one of this challenge is to find two entries in this list that sum up to 2020 and report their product. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to my solution code right now. I highly recommend that you go ahead and give this a try on your own before I do that, and then you can come back and see my solutions after that. So now that you've hopefully gone ahead and given this problem a try for yourself, we can go ahead and jump into my solution. Uh, so first thing that we do is we read the entries. If you just take a look at my main function down here, you'll see how this is actually working. We read in the entries and then we're just passing those to each of the different parts. Um, so we read in the entries with this little uh, function right here, which just opens the file and then uses this list comprehension to return a list of integers instead of a list of lines uh, like we would have otherwise. Um, so then moving on to the actual part one answer. Uh, first, since we're essentially what we're doing is we're checking if things exist in a list here, I first convert it to a set because it's much better to check membership in a set than it is to check in a list. Uh, so we turn it into a set and then we have to deal with one little edge case that occurs because if 1010 occurs in our list, uh, then our general solution is going to report it as an answer even if it only shows up once. And the problem that's causing that is because we're just checking uh, without removing the thing from the set first of all. Uh, that could be another way to deal with this issue, but here uh, that I decided this was a simpler solution. Uh, so if the count of the number of times that appears in the list, again, we're checking the list now, not the set, because the set is going to remove the different numbers of occurrences. So if the number of times that it occurs in the list is more than one, then we go ahead and report it because it is in fact a valid solution. Uh, but otherwise we go ahead and remove it so that it won't affect our general solution. So what we go ahead and do here is uh, for each value in the list, we check if 2020 minus that value is in the list, which obviously is the thing that we need to add to that value to get 2020. If it is, then great, we found our solution. We can go ahead and multiply them together and return that, which I did in this little formatted string right here. So that's it for part one. Now we can jump into part two for today. Uh, so part two is a very similar question, except we need to do it with three numbers instead of two. And this is going to require us to do something slightly different with our solution. Uh, so I recommend you go ahead and give that a try by yourself now. And then we're gonna jump in with my code right about now, um, okay, so if we scroll on down to our part two function here, you can see we start with a similar approach of turning this into a set, uh, but the there is going to be a slight difference here, and that's that we need to get three numbers instead of two. So we can't just check if one specific number works for each thing. Uh, so the way that I did this is I turned this into two uh, nested for loops. Uh, in the first loop, I loop through the enumerate. So what enumerate does is it breaks it down into these little pairs that have the index and then the value and assigns those to either of the two things that I put there. So x now has the index and i has the value. Uh, so the reason I did that is so that our j uh, whatever, our second value won't have to loop through every single value because that's going to cause issues. And instead it can just loop through the values that we haven't checked yet. Um, so with that, we can then go ahead and check 
if 2020 minus i plus j, which is going to be that third number we need, is in our set of entries. Uh, and if it is, we just need to check one little edge case, of course, uh, and otherwise we can return. So the one edge case we need to check is if that 2020 minus i plus j is equal to either i or j. Um, so the problem that arises here is that if it's equal to one of those things, then we need to make sure that the entry that we're seeing in our set is not the only one. So we go ahead and check the count, much like we did in our edge case for part one. And if it's equal to one, then we go ahead and say, okay, it's just picking up on either I or J. Uh, so we can go ahead and continue. This is not a solution, but otherwise we can go ahead and return a solution. Uh, so that's it for part two. If we are to go ahead and edit this, then we can go ahead and run our solution right here. Um, I'll just do it from here, so using my conda environment. And there we go. Those are the answers of my data set. They're going to be different for your data set just because of how advent of code works, I believe. Uh, but that's it for today. So go ahead and drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Be sure to get subscribed to see future days of advent of code. And remember that my code and a playlist with every advent of code video I've made so far is in the description. So goodbye.